I have mixed feelings about my original Moomin video. I'm referring, of course, to the video I made a few months ago titled Old Moomin vs. New Moomin, which is better, part one. On one hand, I am so incredibly thankful for that video. Not only did it bring more people to my channel, but it also proved to me that I could just sit around and talk about something I was passionate about and people would actually listen to what I had to say. But as much as I hate to say it, I kind of hate that video. It was one of the first videos I ever made, and I was still kind of finding my footing on YouTube. Still am, really. So, looking back at that video, there are so many things I wish I had done differently. I feel like the categories I used to compare the show were a bit arbitrary, I don't think the jokes I made were all that funny, and I overall feel as though I could have done a much better job. So, that's what I'm doing now. I know the title says part two, but think of this video as kind of a separate being from the original, kind of like how Moomin Valley is separate from the 90s series. I'm going to approach this video from a different angle. Instead of comparing the different storylines the two different shows chose to include, I'm choosing to focus on more meta aspects here, such as the animation, the music of each show, and the themes they chose to include. Also, I am making one big change. I won't be choosing a winner. I know the title says which is better, but that's just for consistency's sake. I'll explain this later in the video, but from reading your comments and doing a bit of reflecting on my own, I realized it's not really fair to pit the two against each other. So instead of deciding a winner for each category, I'll just talk about the similarities and differences of both and weigh the pros and cons. Again, I'll get into why I made this decision in the final chapter of the video. Now let's get on with it. Spoiler warning for both the 90s series Moomin and the 2019 series Moomin Valley. But before I begin, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who commented on the original video, because without you guys, this video would not have been possible. Your feedback made me realize how many things I hadn't considered when making part one and inspired me to try again. So I guess you could say, this program was made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Part one, revisited. First off, I'd like to revisit some of the topics I feel like I didn't cover properly in my original video. And really quick, I just want to say that the reason I specifically chose the 90 series and the 2019 series to compare is that they're the most popular. I know there are a ton of adaptations out there, but I'm honestly not going anywhere near them because if I do, we'll be here all day. So let's start with The Invisible Child. The more I thought about it and the more comments I read, the more I realized I didn't really agree with my original take on the storyline. If you don't remember, I had decided that the 2019 version adapted the story better than the 90s series had. I don't think that anymore. And that's not to say I don't enjoy Moomin Valley's version of The Invisible Child. I like the addition of Two Tiki, so a handful of points for that. But I'm going to have to immediately take points away because why, why, why did they put Ninny on a leash? I meant to talk about this in part one, I wrote it in my notes, I don't know how that never made it in, but that's so fucked up, right? They straight up put a collar on her like a damn dog. And after re-watching both shows, I realized that in the 90s anime, Ninny has much more agency in her own story. She regains her visibility through her own actions instead of simply being listened to. Of course, being listened to can be very helpful in recovering from neglect like Ninny was, but in the 90s series, Ninny acts of her own volition, so she's more responsible for her character development throughout the story. And I originally criticized the 1990s anime for dragging out Ninny's story across multiple episodes, but now I realize that a character arc like Ninny's, that is, recovering from emotional abuse and neglect, should take time, much longer than a day, which is all it seems to take in the 2019 series. I don't know why, but it took me a couple watches to really click with the story of the invisible child. And I regret not seeing it for what it always was. It's a really powerful tale that I think is really important for kids to read and watch. I still like Moomin Valley's coverage of it, but I now realize that the 90s series does handle it better. I'd also like to take a minute to talk about Thingamy and Bob. Although I had originally stated that the 90s anime covered their story better than Moomin Valley, which I still believe, I didn't exactly explain why. There are very few things I outright hate about Moomin Valley, but the way Thingamy and Bob are presented is one of them. I absolutely despise it. They don't speak in full sentences, they sound like gremlins, they seem more like family pets than characters of their own. 
and nothing about the way they're written indicates what exactly the relationship is. Without the added context of the original books and previous adaptations, you wouldn't know if they were lovers, friends, or even siblings. Like, their entire existence is a metaphor for a romantic relationship between two women, so why make their relationship so ambiguous? Why remove their ability to speak coherently? What's the point of even including them if they're not depicting the relationship they were always meant to represent? It's questionable at best. At least in the 90s series, you could tell Thingami and Bob were both women. I don't know, I just feel like in this day and age, it would have been so easy to just imply that they were in love. They have no problem doing it with Moomin and Snufkin, and that's a whole other can of worms that I refuse to open up two videos in a row. Check out my Moomin Valley Season 3 review for my thoughts on that. Point is, clearly a couple of my opinions have changed since I made my first video back in October. Since I don't necessarily agree with everything I said in part one, I wanted to set things right and give you guys a little update. And now that I have, we can properly move on to the new stuff. The animation! The most immediately noticeable difference between the two shows is the animation. They look completely different. Obviously, this is because the 90s anime is done with hand-drawn 2D animation, while the 2019 series is animated using CGI. Something I noticed while reading through the comments is that a lot of you guys seem to favor the animation and art style of the 90s series over the 2019 one. And spoiler alert, I agree! I don't hate the animation in Moomin Valley, but something about it is a bit stiff compared to its older counterpart. I think this is most noticeable in the character design. While there are certain characters I think look better in Moomin Valley, like Snufkin and Stinky for example, I think the Moomins and Snorks especially look way better in the 90s anime. This Moomin looks like a marshmallow, like he would feel kind of squishy if he gave him a hug. This Moomin looks like he's made of styrofoam. Also, this might seem like a nitpick, I don't think it is because I've seen a few people mention this, but I hate the way the character's arms are animated in Moomin Valley. The way they bend makes me so uncomfortable, real Chamber of Secrets energy. However, one thing the 2019 series does very well is lighting. The animators are very good at rendering things like sunlight through trees, glow from firelight, sunsets, sunrises. They're very good at creating a sense of mood and atmosphere. But the animation and art of the 90s series is just more appealing to me, especially with its hand-painted establishing shots of the valley. There's definitely a reason you see so many stills from this show in all those aesthetically pleasing mood boards on Pinterest. While I prefer the hand-drawn look of the 90s series, it does make sense to animate the modern series by computer, because unfortunately, hand-drawn animation isn't super common anymore. It's more reflective of the era we're in now, I suppose, and modern advancements in technology enable the animators to add in extra details like the lighting I just mentioned, textures, and depth. But I wish Moomin Valley had taken more inspiration from the 90s series and chosen to make 2D animation look 3D, kind of like that movie Klaus. Let me put it this way, 30 years later, the animation in the 90s anime still holds up and looks beautiful. 30 years from now, will we say the same thing about Moomin Valley? The music. I know I've talked about the music of Moomin Valley like a million times, but sorry, I'm about to talk some more. The two scores of each show sound completely different. The 90s score is mostly synthetic, with a lot of synthesizers and the occasional harmonica and accordion. There's also some nice piano and even some bass. I don't think the 2019 score has any synths at all. Instead, there's lots of piano, strings, flutes, and woodwinds. But both series use their music effectively to create their respective moods. The 90s score sounds so warm and cozy compared to its modern counterpart, which feels more fresh. To me, they represent different aspects of the valley. This might sound kind of bonkers, but I've always felt the 90s score sounds more indoors and the 2019 score sounds more outdoors. Another difference between the two shows is that in addition to the score, Moomin Valley also features an original soundtrack from various artists. And of course, I adore the original soundtracks composed for seasons 1 and 2, especially 1, but I've said that multiple times, so I'm not going to get too into it here. If you want to know my thoughts on the soundtrack for Moomin Valley, check out my Top 10 Moomin Valley Songs video. After you're done watching this one, of course. And in addition to this soundtrack, Moomin Valley also features two musical numbers, Drift in Season 2 and Just Let It Out in Season 3. If you've seen my Top 10 Moomin Valley Songs video, you already know I really hate Drift, so I'm going to move on before I get too worked up. 
Just Let It Out is fine, but the chorus is a bit clunky, and Matt Berry's voice sounds excessively autotuned to me. Overall, I don't really think these musical numbers were a necessary addition to the show. But one thing I love about Moomin Valley's score is that each character is given their own leitmotif. If you're into music, or if you're subscribed to Sideways, then you probably already know what a leitmotif is. But if you don't, it's basically a musical theme associated with a certain character. Snufkin and Little Mai's themes are the most noticeable when watching the show, but you can find them everywhere if you listen closely. And all the instruments used, like piano, strings, and even the occasional harpsichord, really suit this modern version of the valley. I will say the electric guitar used for Little Mai feels a little out of place, but it suits the character well. But you guys already know how I feel about the music of Moomin Valley. I haven't really talked about the music from the 90s series, which I also love. I know I mentioned it briefly in part one, but now I think it's time to delve into it a bit more. First of all, I will say it feels a bit repetitive at times. For example, every time there's a more exciting action sequence, the same exact song plays every time. It's a fun tune, but it gets old fast. And maybe it's just the nature of a dubbed show, but oftentimes it feels as though there's music playing when there shouldn't be, or no music playing when there should be. That being said, the music in the show is lovely when used properly. It's very melody-heavy and jolly, and it doesn't fade into the background as easily as the 2019 soundtrack does. While I may not remember every piece of background music from Moomin Valley, I can hum pretty much every tune from the 90s series. And I do. Often. I'm not the best roommate. I also love the 90s theme song. It may not be as pretty as Moomin Valley's, but it is more fun to sing along to. And overall, the 90s series just has a lot of really memorable and beautiful melodies. But speaking of beautiful melodies, I want to talk about Snufkin's Spring Tune from the 2019 series. I've mentioned before that the spring tune is my favorite episode of Moomin Valley, and that's partly because of the tune itself. Even after a full episode of hyping this tune up, nothing could have prepared me for it. First of all, the song sounds exactly like you would expect it to when reading the books. I imagine it can't be easy to write a song just from a description of it, but that's exactly what they did. It really does sound like one part expectation, two part spring sadness, and the great delight of walking alone and liking it. And it feels exactly like a bright spring day. It makes you feel like everything around you is just starting to come to life again. And this is probably me reading too much into it, but whenever I hear that sweet, sweet tune, I always think of Snufkin and how deeply he and Moomin love each other, platonically or otherwise. And then I think of how deeply Moomin is loved by his parents and Snork Maiden and Little Mai, in her own way. And then I think of how welcoming the Moomin family is, and how they seem to have limitless love and care to give to anyone who needs it. They find so much joy in their day-to-day -day life, through their daily adventures and through their connections with those around them. And that's kind of what it's all about, isn't it? It sounds strange, but to me, this melody manages to capture not only the essence of Moomin Valley, but of the entire Moomin franchise. All of that is to say that Snufkin's spring tune is what tips the scales in 2019's favor. I love the soundtrack from the 90s anime, but I just have a much stronger emotional attachment to the music from the 2019 series. The characters! In part one, I talked for a bit about Snufkin's characterization. And I stand by what I said, I absolutely love the way Snufkin is depicted in the 2019 series, but it was a bit unfair for me to only focus on one character. So let's go back and cover all the folks I left out. One thing I would like to clarify before I start is that the two shows take a somewhat different approach to character. The 90s anime is more story-driven, and the main characters mostly stay the same throughout. The 2019 series, however, is more character-driven and focuses on developing the main cast of characters. I also feel as though the characters' ages vary between each series. I'll talk about that in more detail throughout this segment, but generally, I feel as though most of the main cast of characters were aged up in Moomin Valley with a couple of exceptions. First off, let's talk about Moomin himself. I consider 90s Moomin Troll and 2019 Moomin Troll to be the same character at different points in their life. In the 90s series, Moomin is a young child, maybe eight or nine, or I don't know, maybe he's like three, I don't know, I don't know, kids. Either way, he's very curious about the world around him. He's a bit sensitive and naive, and he dreams of things like being a pirate, only without stealing anything, which Snufkin reminds him is just a sailor. Speaking of Snufkin, Moomin's relationship with him is very different in each series. In the 90s series, because Moomin Troll seems to be a bit younger than Snufkin, he completely idolizes him. 
They're still besties, of course, but things feel a bit one-sided in the way Moomin pines and aches and longs for Snufkin whenever he leaves the valley. Whereas in Moomin Valley, they seem to pine for each other equally, and they also seem to be around the same age. In the 2019 series, Moomin Troll seems like more of a teenager. He still wants to see the world and have adventures of his own, but this stems more from wanting to follow in his father's footsteps as an explorer. Moomin Valley mostly follows Moomin Troll as he learns to be his own individual, just like all teenagers do. And, like all teenagers do, he's very prone to angst in the 2019 series. I know some people don't like this, but I do. There's something so funny about a character like Moomin Troll sulking about and saying things like, Nobody understands me. I hope you guys love my Moomin Troll impression. I don't really favor one interpretation of the character over the other because they're kind of the same character to me. Let's move on to Moomin Mama. I love Moomin Mama in both adaptations, but I feel as though she's more of a complex character in the 2019 series. Of course, she's a caring, wise, maternal figure and an excellent host in every adaptation of the books, but Moomin Valley introduces a more adventurous side to her. She hides a fugitive in her basement, has a passion for flying, and even implies that she once went to jail. I still think the two versions of the character are very similar, but the 2019 version has more depth, which I appreciate. Moomin Papa, however, has always been more of a static character to me, at least in these two shows. Although season two of Moomin Valley focuses on his coming to terms with his role in the family and in the valley, which is fine, it kind of reminds me of The Incredibles, honestly. But something about the storyline just never really resonated with me. But that's my own fault. I guess it's just hard for me to relate to a middle-aged man's midlife crisis. I mean, I never thought I'd live to see 18, much less 40. <laughs> Was that joke too dark? That was too dark. I'm sorry. Y'all didn't need to know that. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that the two interpretations of the character feel very similar to me. The only difference is that I find 2019 Moom and Papa to be a bit funnier, mostly due to the way Matt Berry delivers his lines, but that's really it. Both versions of the character are equal to me. And I know I went on and on about 2019 Snufkin in part one, but I never really talked about his 90s counterpart. I think of Snufkin's character kind of the same way I think of Moomin Trolls, but in reverse. While Moomin seems to be a bit older in Moomin Valley, Snufkin seems to be a bit younger. In the 90s anime, he acts like more of a teenager, like Moomin in the 2019 series. I think the reason I love 90s Snufkin so much is because of his voice, but we'll get to that later. I love his self-assurance and his passion for crime, and I love the way he constantly appears seemingly out of nowhere to help Moomin and company whenever they're in trouble. He's like the older kid in the neighborhood that everyone looks up to. He mostly keeps to himself, but he'll play with the little kids if they ask. He turns up to the barbecue and they all get excited. Not to keep repeating myself, but I just love the way Moomin Valley explores his character, from his feelings towards Moomin Troll to his social anxieties. I love the way he learns to take responsibility and to open himself up to people throughout the series. While I may think of Moomin Troll as the same character at different ages, the two Snufkins are completely different to me. I love both, and while I think 2019 Snufkin is a more interesting and well-developed character, it's hard for me to choose a favorite. But the opposite is true for Little Mai. This might not be what some of y'all want to hear, but I despise Little Mai in the 90s series. She's an irritating little pest. But when I was a kid, my dad always told me that if I didn't have anything nice to say, then I shouldn't say anything at all. Anyway, 2019 Little Mai is such a funny little beast. I love her dearly. She's bold and brash without being irritating. She's funny. And I love how Moomin Valley reveals her more emotional side, in season 3 especially. We see her struggle with her parentage and relationship with Moomin Papa, and we discover that she really does care deeply for Moomin and company, as well as that sweet little squirrel. Similar to Moomin Mama, the 2019 series takes the character and adds a nice little extra layer, like an onion. I guess mentioning food is as good a way as any to move on to Sniff. Sniff is fine. I've never had strong feelings about him one way or the other, although I suppose I used to find him a bit of a nuisance. As a result, I don't have a ton to say about him. I guess I could say that his characterization in the 90s series and the 2019 series are very similar, except 90s Sniff is a bit more... what's the word? useless. And like Moomin Papa, Moomin Valley never really makes an effort to develop him in a way that I enjoy personally. I personally prefer 2019 Sniff as I find him funnier than his 90s counterpart, but I could really go either way. Let's talk about Snork Maiden. I view her the same way I view Moomin Troll. 
90 Snork Maiden is a very idealistic young girl who loves beauty and fairy tales, and she then grows into a confident young woman in the 2019 series. She still has her same appreciation for beauty and fashion, and she still seems to think of Moomatrol as her prince, unless she's pissed at him, which is most of the time, but she's become more practical and responsible. I love how in Moomin Valley she has a more artistic side, and how she's often very headstrong, even stubborn. Just like Moomin, she's also finding her footing and trying to figure out who she is as an individual, particularly outside of her relationship with Moomatrol. Speaking of which, the way she handles their, unfortunately temporary, breakup in season 2 is really mature. I do wish their breakup had been permanent so the writers would be able to explore both Moomin and Snork Maiden as individuals without one holding the other back, but you can't always get what you want, I suppose. And finally, I just want to expand on what I said about Snork in my Moomin Valley Season 3 review. Like I said, I had always been neutral towards Snork in the 90s anime. I didn't love him, but I never hated him either. But I absolutely adore Moomin Valley's neurodivergent interpretation of Snork. He is just wonderful. He's so sweet, so clever, and from what I've heard, he makes for excellent autistic representation. And of course I love that. In the 90s series, it always seemed to me as though Snork was much older than Snork Maiden. In Moomin Valley, they appear much closer in age, and it's so heartwarming how they both look out for each other. And instead of changing or developing his character, I really like how Snork stays the same throughout the series. Instead of having him learn some bullshit lesson about honesty or whatever, the show affirms that Snork doesn't and shouldn't have to make himself more palatable for everyone else, which is absolutely true. It's so sick, it's like anti-character development. Which reminds me, this whole time I've been talking about how generally the 2019 series develops its characters while the 90 series doesn't, outside of episodic lessons learned. Obviously, there are exceptions, like Nini, who I talked about earlier, but overall, the main cast of characters that I included in this segment never really go through any big arcs over the course of the series. But that's not a bad thing. Yes, the characters in the 90 series stay mainly static throughout the show's run, but that's very much intentional. The goal of the 90s anime was to be a slice of life, laid back sort of series. They didn't develop their characters because they didn't want to, and that's fine. I don't think Moomin Valley writing in character arcs automatically makes it a better series because it kind of doesn't. Sometimes you just want a simple story about a fun cast of characters and their daily shenanigans. And speaking of casts, the cast! At first, I wasn't sure if I should include this one because each series was originally recorded in a different language, but I think the cast is such an integral part of each series that I just had to talk about it. Moomin Valley is an English show, and the 90s series is a Japanese show that was later dubbed into English, so obviously there's a bit of a language barrier. Unfortunately, I am but a simpleton who only knows English, so I'm only going to be talking about the English casts of each show. I'll go one by one through all the show's major characters, starting with Moomintroll. Like I said, I've always viewed 90s Moomintroll and 2019 Moomintroll to be the same character at different stages of life, so it's only natural for them to have two completely different voices. I think each respective actor, or actors in Moomin Valley's case, suit their character very well. Like I said, Moomintroll is very much a young child in the 90s anime, and the late, great Susan Sheridan portrays this really well. To be honest, when I was first exposed to Moomins, it was through the 90s series, and I thought Moomin Troll was a girl, so when everyone was like, oh, Moomin and Snufkin are gay, I was like, how though? I've heard that other dubs make Moomin Troll sound more masculine, but to me it doesn't really make much of a difference if he sounds masculine or feminine, as long as he sounds rather young. I want to revisit the scene I talked about in part 1, where Moomin is transformed by the hobgoblin's hat and begs for his mother to recognize him. In the 90s series, the scene is so visceral and heartbreaking, and Susan Sheridan sells it 100,000%. It's really incredible. She's also so talented at capturing Moomin Troll's childlike wonder and idealization, especially when speaking to Snufkin. I tend to be very wary of really young characters in children's media because they can get real irritating real fast, but Susan Sheridan threads that needle so well and makes Moomin sound young and adorable without being too babyish. I really can't compliment her enough. Also, I should have said this at the beginning of the segment, but if I pronounce anybody's name wrong from here on out, I am so sorry. I looked them up before I started, but I am like notoriously bad at pronouncing anything ever, so uh, sorry. 
Obviously, Taron Egerton had big shoes to fill when he joined the cast of Moomin Valley, but I think he overall did a really good job. He's so good at capturing Moomin Troll's more dramatic side as well as his teenage angst. I just wish they had given him more songs to sing that weren't absolute ass. However, I do prefer Jack Rowan's performance as Moomin Troll over Taron's. Something about his performance just seems more streamlined and mature to me, which makes sense for season 3, and he adds a couple little vocal quirks that I really like. I also think he has a lot more chemistry with the rest of the cast, especially Edvin Endre Snufkin. I kind of wish the same actor, either Taryn or Jack, had been able to voice Moomin Troll throughout, just because I like things to be consistent, but I really don't have any complaints about either performance. I feel the same way about Moomin Mama. I like Rosamund Pike's performance in the 2019 series quite a bit. I think she brings a lot of nuance to the character. She's able to portray a lot of emotions while maintaining Moomin Mama's kind, gentle nature. I don't know if I can say the same for Pat Starr's performance in the 90s anime, but I love it nonetheless because she has a way of reading every single line in an extremely calm voice, even if the situation doesn't really call for it, which is just really funny to me. Now, I don't have a lot of strong opinions about the casting choices for Moomin Papa, I think Matt Berry does a fine job in the 2019 series. I think he's funny, and I also think he and Rosamund Pike have more romantic chemistry than Mama and Papa do in the 90s series. That's really about it. I enjoy what Peter Whitman and William Roberts both did with the character. I especially appreciate how Roberts did his best to sound similar to Whitman after he passed away. I guess my only issue would be that both performances make Moom and Papa seem quite old, older than he is in my opinion. Speaking of being older, let's talk about Snufkin. I already talked about this in my original video, but I absolutely love John Chancer as Snufkin. It's the reason I got into Moomins in the first place. He has this magical way of making Snufkin seem like he's in both his early teens and his late 20s. The way he delivers all his lines is so funny and charming, I just love it. We stand John Chancer in this household. Hopefully that statement doesn't age poorly. But that's not to say I don't like Edvin Endre as Snufkin. I didn't give him his flowers in part one, and I really should have. First of all, it was absolutely genius to give Snufkin a different accent from everyone else to indicate his status as a traveler. His soft-spoken voice is so perfect for this version of the character. He's also really good at portraying this Snufkin's awkwardness and more emotional demeanor. He adds a lot of depth to the character, just like Rosamund Pike does with Moomin Mama. And I mentioned earlier that I really don't care for 90s Little Mai, and to be honest, that's mostly because of her voice. It's very shrill and grating. I could tell from the very first time she spoke that I wasn't going to have a fun time with this character. But I've also mentioned in the past that I love 2019 Little Mai, especially in comparison to her 90s counterpart. I love what Belle Powley does with the character. You can tell she's having a lot of fun, although her presence in the cast means the link between Moomins and Pete Davidson is a bit closer than I'd like it. It to be. She's perfectly snarky and temperamental without ever being unlikable, and just like with Snufkin and Moomin Mama, her performance adds a side to the character we haven't seen before, particularly her more caring, sensitive side. Moving on to Sniff. And by the way, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about any other adaptations in this video, but isn't it insane that Sniff was once voiced by Mads fucking Mickelson? I don't think the 90s version and the 2019 version sound very similar, but somehow they have the same vibe to me. I don't necessarily think one is better than the other, but I will say that Jeff Harding's performance in the 90s series tends to get on my nerves a bit. And I kind of feel the same way about Tony Berry's performance as Snork Maiden in the 90s series. She voices Little Mai as well, so maybe I just have beef with Tony Berry in general. I'm sorry, Tony. I think she does a wonderful job capturing Snork Maiden's more sweet, dreamy nature in this series, but something about it sounds almost whiny. I'm not sure how to describe it, but the way she reads her more dramatic lines, like this, kind of high-pitched and breathy, <laughs> is just not my favorite. But similar to Susan Sheridan's performance as Moomin, Tony Berry does a great job capturing Snark Maiden's young age without making her too exhausting to listen to. In the 2019 series, I think Akia Henry is an excellent voice actress. Not to keep beating this very dead horse, but Moon Valley adds more layers to Snork Maiden that I think she pulls off very well. She's even able to act out those insufferable arguments between her and Moomin Troll without making you irritated with her character, which to me is quite a tremendous feat indeed. There are a couple line deliveries of hers that I personally think could have used another take or two, but overall I think she does a pretty good job. And with her brother Snork, there's really no contest. 
David Grimm's performance in the 90s anime is alright, but I love Chance Perdomo as Snork. I think the voice David Grimm uses is a big part of what makes the character seem so old, older than his sister in particular. In Moomin Valley, I think Chance Perdomo and Akia Henry have great sibling chemistry, even if Akia's accent is way stronger, at least to my American ears. I think Chance is really good at portraying Snork's quiet intelligence, and he makes him very honest and blunt while still being very polite. I absolutely love it. Before we move on to the next chapter of the video, I want to talk about the two casts as a whole because they're obviously quite different. The 90s series has a group of voice actors recording an English dub of a series that was originally made in a different language. The 2019 series, by comparison, is absolutely stacked out the ass. Everyone in it is a well-known actor, not voice actor, and some of them have won Golden Globes, Emmys, and Saturn Awards, and Rosamund Pike was even nominated for an Oscar. Though, if you watched my video on Bohemian Rhapsody, you'll know I don't have nearly as much faith in the Academy as I used to. My point is, they have much more recognition, experience, and training than the cast from the 90s. And it's worth noting that they're all mostly actors, not voice actors, which is entirely different and not really comparable. While acting requires a bit more subtlety, voice acting requires you to convey much more emotion with your voice alone. It's also worth noting that several of the cast members from the 90s series voice multiple characters and have to differentiate each of them. I'd honestly say it's more difficult to be a voice actor than an actor, and the voice actors from the 90s series are pretty damn good at what they do. But... What do I know? The most acting experience I have are those Moomin Troll and Snork Maiden impressions I did a while ago. The Stories Now, I've mentioned this a couple times throughout the video, but the 90s series and the 2019 series take a completely different approach to the source material. The 2019 series takes the existing characters and expands on who they are as individuals. It adds extra depth to the characters, blah blah blah, I've said it like a million times. By comparison, the 90s anime is more simple. It just follows this lovable cast of characters in their day-to-day -day lives. Of course, their day-to-day -day lives are nothing like ours, but you get what I'm saying. Moomin Valley does this too, but there are often emotional arcs the characters go through. The themes and characters are more nuanced than in the 90s series. While there are certain themes and arcs that Moomin Valley will explore throughout a season, the 90s series is more episodic. It's not that one show is better or worse than the other, they're just different. And the way we view them is different as well. Nostalgia when reading through the comments on part 1, I found a lot of people who, like me, were weighing the pros and cons of each series. But there were also a significant number of people who insisted that the 90s series was better, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Some of y'all explained why you thought so, but most of you guys were just like, the 90s version is better. No explanation, just straight to the point, and I respect it. But I have to ask, and I mean this in the kindest way possible, but what if the reason you think the old series is better is because you were young then? And I'll fully admit that I'm biased too. Everything from my age, to my home country, to the language I speak affects my opinion, and I'm sure it affects yours too. But I think nostalgia is a very powerful thing. And it definitely changes the way we view things, especially in this case. I discovered both series around the same time, so it's much harder for me to choose a favorite, but I wonder how I would feel if things hadn't gone that way. What if I had grown up with the 90s series like so many of you guys did? What if I watched Moon Valley first and didn't discover the 90s version until much later? This video, as well as part one, would probably be entirely different. Maybe I wouldn't have made them at all. To be completely honest, this was the most difficult video I've ever made. I thought my Bohemian Rhapsody video would be the most difficult, but it wasn't, not by a long shot, and that one was an hour long. It got to the point where I was literally having dreams about scripting or recording or editing this video. I kept putting it off and dragging my feet for a long time because I had promised a part two of my most successful video, but I had no idea where to even start. It wasn't that I didn't have anything to say, I had things I wanted to talk about, but I just didn't know how to wrap things up, I didn't know how to choose the better show. 
Both series draw from such a large body of work, so each show is bound to get some things right and some things wrong. And besides, how can I compare two shows that clearly had different intentions? Moomin Valley is more focused on developing its characters and expressing nuanced themes, and Moomin is more focused on being a comforting, slice-of-life kind of series. So how can I fault it for not having character arcs when that's clearly not something it's trying to do? Because of this whole conundrum, I was completely stuck for a long time. I even considered putting out an apology video saying something like, Hey, I'm really sorry, but I don't think part two is going to be possible because I don't know how to compare the two shows without being fair to everyone. I know each series has its dedicated fans, and I didn't want to disappoint anyone, and I didn't want to disappoint myself by saying something I didn't truly mean, and it just became a big mess. But eventually I realized it honestly just doesn't make sense to plug everything into an algorithm and decide a clear winner. It just doesn't work like that. Each series has its own strengths and weaknesses, and one isn't better than the other because they're both different shows, made in different eras, with different teams behind them, with completely different intentions and goals. All of that rambling is to say that I don't think it's fair to select a winner. I personally like the 2019 series better, but I definitely still think it's flawed, and that doesn't mean I don't think the 1990 series is good. I completely understand why people prefer that version, especially if you grew up with it. At the end of the day, everyone has their own perspective, and everyone's perspective is valid. I'm glad we have both shows, as well as every other adaptation of Tuve's books, because together they have all spread so much comfort and joy to all kinds of people throughout the years, and that's why the Moomins have such a special place in my heart. And here's the finished piece I was working on in the first half of the video, which you saw in the thumbnail. You can see more of my art on my Instagram, which is linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you liked me, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want, you can even turn notifications on so you'll be the first to know when I'm moving my entire family to an island in the middle of nowhere. Anyways, that's all from me. I gotta go finish my new spring tune. I really gotta hurry since spring started two months ago. Bye!